Maybe oh, anticipation. Oh, I <laughs> sorry, sorry. Guys, we're in, we're in the new house. Um, this will be our first kind of like official week here. We've, we moved, we had our first night here Wednesday, it's now Monday, so we've not been here for quite quite a week, but this is our first kind of like Monday, you know, full week stint. Um, last week was absolute chaos, honestly. When you really think about moving, like really think about what it is that you're having to do, it is ludicrous, packing up all your stuff, moving it to another place and then unpacking it again. Um, so yeah, absolute chaos last week and I think unless you are extremely organised or have a great removals company, neither of which we are or had, then there will always be something you forget, something that goes wrong. Um, we forgot about an understairs cupboard at the very last minute and also our loft. <laughs> so there was quite a mad rush towards the very end of last week where we were just like throwing things in boxes and just being like, right, we'll worry about this when it gets to this house. So things are a bit all over the place here at the moment. There's not really a singular room that's kind of like done. Um, still lots that needs unpacking, uh, but we're kind of having to figure out our storage situation at the moment. So yeah, stuff's still everywhere and it will be for a while, I think. Um, but trying not to get complacent, you know, there's always that risk of like, getting used to like that box in the corner of the kitchen or you know things not quite having a home or like for example in our bathroom there's no toilet roll holder on the wall yet and there's no towel rail and it's it's dangerous because you learn to live with things being like that and then as a result those things never get fixed so this weekend we're really going to try and like get like tick off loads of things like that so that we don't get complacent because this week we're both back to work so uh, things are going to slow down a bit now and it's going to be a, just a case of kind of doing things in the evening again and at the weekends um, so that's another reason I think why you get so complacent is that you just you then get back into your routine of things and you just kind of lose the energy and the momentum to like continue unpacking or doing like the sort of like little house jobs and things like that um, what else was I going to say? Oh, I've got some nice new beauty products actually. I had a facial with Tata Harper recently and at the end the facialist used this new blusher and lipstick and I loved them both. Um, if you pay any attention when I talk about makeup, not that I talk about it often or talk about it with much conviction, you might remember that I, um, I'm a big fan of their peach blush and this one is a new colour called Lovely and it's a true, it's a very true like just a true rosy pink so it's a great sort of like everyday all-rounder and then this lipstick um, called Blase I never wear lipstick because I really struggle to find lipsticks that kind of suit my lip colour and skin tone but this is a, for me a really good your lips but better kind of tone just sort of evens them out can't notice straight away that I've got lipstick on um, yeah, I like that a lot. I've also got some new Majuri pieces on. I think they've um, slightly expanded their Charlotte collection, which is the collection that has the, these, the sort of chunky ridged collection. This is a like a staple that's been in the Charlotte collection for ages, but I, I feel like the hoops are new, or maybe I've just never noticed them. They're, they're just sort of like a classic hoop shape, but they've almost been like squidged, if you see what I mean, so they're a little bit rectangular. They're nice, just like every day that's a slightly bolder kind of style than a thin hoop. My everyday hoops are a pair of like really thin, small Majuri ones. They've just opened up a store in Covent Garden actually. So if you find yourself in London and would like to see Majuri pieces IRL, then do check out the Covent store, Covent, Covent Garden store. I've not been yet. I've not been in London for a while. But I really want to pop in because a while ago, some of you might remember this, I lost a pouch of jewellery and it was kind of like, it was a tiny little pouch that I keep all of my sort of like everyday hoops, rings and bracelets in. And to this day, never found it heartbreakingly. Um, and yeah, it had some of my favourite everyday, everyday jewellery in it. And one of those things was a pair of hoops from a jewellery that were, 
I can't remember the size of them. I want to say two centimeters. Were they two centimeters? Anyway, they were just like a really good, slightly larger everyday hoop that I've still not replaced yet. So I would like to go into the store and see if I, if, see if they still do that style. Because they are really good at just doing like a great everyday hoop. Um, what else do I have to report on this morning? Not much really. Um, it's just today, like I said, is a very gloomy day. I put hair mask in. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of alternate between working and unpacking pretty much all day. Um, oh, I will do a, a whiz around the house actually at some point as well. Maybe when the, the light's a bit nicer because um, then you'll be able to see how lovely the house looks when it's all sunny. Do you fancy seeing what I'm wearing to the supermarket today? If you're screaming no at your screen right now, then tough. I'm gonna make you endure this very basic outfit. I've literally just put a trench over what I was lounging around the house in and just swapped out my flip-flops for uh, a pair of loafers because it's raining. And I can't believe I'm having to wear a jumper and a trench at the end of July, but this is England after all. Um, totem trench coat, Johnsters of Elgin cashmere jumper, but it's like a really thin, like super lightweight cashmere. So it's really good for this kind of like 16, 17 degrees kind of temp where there's a little bit of a chill in the air. Very old linen trousers from a brand called Missing You Already. Uh, GH Bass loafers, just literally put the first closed toe shoe that I could find on. And then this bag, this new bag from Corley Studio, which I think is deserving of a bit of a show and tell maybe later on because it is absolutely stunning. It's just such a beautiful bag. And then jewellery is from Majuri. I usually have on my really thin hoops from a jewelry. I've had them for about two or three years. They're like my everyday hoop, but just fancied kind of like something a little bit bolder today, just while I'm in such a sort of simple outfit along with um, my jewelry ring. Um, right, I'm off to Lidl. And do you know what's super exciting about where we live now? We live next to, not next to, but within like a very short walking distance to a ginormous Lidl. The biggest little I think I've ever seen. It must be like a sort of new type of little, like a, a superstore. Um, and it's great because like where we lived beforehand, we didn't really have access to a bigger supermarket without driving to one. So being able to walk to one is really great. I uh, don't have to rely on like a Tesco Express anymore, which I just, I really don't like them. They're just, I get them. I get the reasoning behind them, but I just don't like them. So being able to walk to a massive supermarket is great and also the those of you that are familiar with the middle of Lidl and understand how just exciting the middle of Lidl is will be super excited to know that the middle of Lidl in our Lidl is um I think it's three aisles wide it's it's big it's a very big middle section and it's virtually impossible to go in there without really having a good thorough look um, my plan is to go in and just get lunch stuff, but I assume I'm probably going to leave with maybe like a lawnmower, a 40 piece cutlery set, um, you know, maybe like a little branded cap, who knows. Um, literally every week is different in the middle of little and it's, it's, it's exciting. Not sure how many times I just said little in the past minute. <laughs> I literally just flew out of the house, like slicked my hair back, just shoved a load of stuff in the bag and then just like ran to the end of my road because I was really worried I was going to miss the bus and then miss my train into London. Only to realise about two minutes into my bus journey that I was an hour and a half earlier than I needed to be. I hadn't actually properly checked what time I needed to be in London. Um, so yeah, I was an hour and a half ahead of schedule. So I just got off the bus and then got the bus back up the road because I just thought I'm not going to try and kill an hour and a half either sat at the train station or in London um plus I really don't like leaving the house in such a rush I feel really flustered and then I don't feel right for the rest of the day so it feels nice to actually come back reset I also was really paranoid that I'd forgotten some stuff um so I can like properly pack my bag and also show you my outfit because I didn't have time to do that this morning Ooh, that was a bit wobbly um a Nina Bing t-shirt this is such a good t-shirt because it's a really um it's like a proper like sort of slubby vintage style t-shirt good cut as well you can see it's kind of got a bit of a marl to it love it um paired with this stylin world of stylin stillin 
really should figure out how that's pronounced, skirt. Just a good cotton poplin one that I've been wearing quite low on the waist to kind of create a nice shape. Um, it is sold out at the moment, annoyingly, um, but I'll try and link some alternatives because I do think cotton poplin skirts are a dime a dozen at the moment. There's loads of great ones about. And then these Jill Sander pumps that I got on Vestiaire last week, they've got um, sort of like a beaded anklet attached to them and a really nice like high V vamp. Brand new, never worn, under £200. I think that is a pretty good find, especially because you'd probably pay sort of £100 upwards for shoes in places like Cos, wouldn't you? Um, and then because the weather is really quite on and off today, I am going to wear a trench coat over this. There we go, that's better. Just like sleeves up a bit, kind of try and make it a little bit summery, even though I'm having to wear a coat. Um, domed signet from Majuri quite a while ago though. And then this is a more recent Majuri edition. Um, and then Dragon Diffusion Basket Bag, which is great because you can fit loads in it and it's, you know, very easily expandable. But in terms of practicality in a busy city, unsure because it doesn't do up. So inside here, I'll show you. Like you can see it, it kind of gets a good size in. So this is a, this is my like Invisalign pouch. This is my makeup and mints and other bits pouch. I do normally have another pouch for my wires, but I haven't um, used that today. My purse, um, and then I can also fit my book in there. And I'll probably use my book as like a sort of like cover up. Um, I also do have this rather fetching takeaway pot. This was once for sweet chilli sauce. It is now used for my hair gel. I feel like I need to find something a little bit more, more practical because I always fear that the lid is going to come off this. And something that just doesn't look quite as sort of like gross. Um, but I will be taking that with me also. Right, quite the showstopper of a shirt today, but I've wanted to try a bold red out um, and thought a shirt was a good way to do that. And I'm seeing a lot of like nice bold red shirts in shops at the moment. This one's from Stina Goya that I ordered through 24 Sivres. Um, it's very oversized. I think this is the smallest size and I would have liked it to be a little bit shorter. So I'm contemplating whether to take it to the tailor keep that curve but just have it brought up a little bit just I think proportionally it might look a bit better if it was shorter and I think it would also work with other pieces a bit better if it was shorter I really wanted to wear this with like a quite a full skirt but with this over the top it just the proportions were a bit like this was drowning me a bit too much I feel like with trousers I can kind of get away with it because the trousers are quite slim anyway paired it with all black and then I've kind of like lightened it up again with a cream shoe so just a plain black ribbed tank from St Agni my Izzy Miyake pleats please trousers but these are the thicker ones so there's like the the original one that's quite thin if you felt the original one it is quite a thin fabric these are thicker so they've got a little bit of a sheen to them and I think the pleat is a little bit tighter I just prefer the way the thicker ones feel I feel a bit more secure in them if you know what I mean and then these crochet kind of like wrap ankle wrap flats from a very very beautiful Ukrainian um, shoe brand, which I will link in the description box. These are all handmade, the, the crochet shoes. They ha also have them in black, and I think they do them in like a beige color. I'm very tempted to order the black. Um, but they do take about, I think it's about four to six weeks, or maybe it's not that long, um, because they are all made to order. But they're very comfortable, and they do have a, like a fully solid sole. And then my bag is just Dragon Diffusion again. This is actually brown, although it's kind of looking a bit more black on camera. What is that on my bag? Oh, just a bit of a thread. Um, I just felt like the brown was a nice sort of like subtle shift from the black. And then I've kept my jewellery very, very simple because I feel like the shirt is such a showstopper. I don't particularly need anything bold. Maybe like a necklace would be nice, but I don't have, I don't have time. I need to go to the dentist. Um, so I've just got the Majuri, just the plain Majuri hoops back in and the domed signet ring. But yeah, maybe like a, like a thin gold chain would also be quite nice with this.
I'll just have to stop for lunch because um, that's the thing I'm looking for. The, the bookcase will be the end of me if I don't have a break and just reset. I'm almost done with the second coat of the stain and then it will need two, well, we're hoping it will only need one coat of Osmo oil, which is just a satin oil that will kind of like seal it all, make it look a lot richer and give it a slight satin finish, make it look a bit more solid. But, so we'll do one coat, see how it looks, it might need a second coat. And then it will just, then you like buff it to really sort of smooth it all out. So you, so you add, add the oil, do one layer of oil, then you buff it, then a second layer, then you buff it again, and then it should be really smooth and look really sort of like nice and have a nice sheen to it and feel really solid. Um, my brain is frazzled though. That this whole bookcase fiasco has, I, I mean, it looks great, but because of the sheer size of it, it has just felt like such a big task and I probably wouldn't recommend anyone do this kind of thing themselves unless it's on a smaller scale or you just have good patience and great upper arm strength because it is it does it does a number on your shoulders just continuously oiling because it's we're putting like this wax stain on so it needs to be really worked into the wood um, I just can't wait to get our books off the floor onto that bookshelf and then we can finally put the rug down and have that as a proper dining space because at the moment we're just eating our dinner on the sofa. Um, and yeah, just, yeah, there's a lot to do still. We have a list here taped to the wall. It is the, the big new never ending house list because it literally is never ending. You tick something off and then you add something new because you think of something else that he's doing. So actually the list never gets smaller, it just stays the same size. We find ourselves yet again navigating weather that just seems completely impossible to dress for. It's like warm but windy and there's a lot of rain hanging around. So yeah, it's it's very hard to dress for. Whether this is entirely practical, I'm unsure and is probably subject to change. Uh, Scale Studio Skirt, which is actually great for this weather because I, I still, you know, I've got the ventilation but it's quite a heavy weight skirt. Um, it's quite a thick fabric. It's got a really nice texture to it, some lovely fringing details. I sized up in this because I wanted it to sit a little bit lower on my hips and also have the freedom to tuck like thicker layers into it. It's got pockets, it's a nice little wrap over one, beautiful movement um, when I'm walking. Uh, vintage Calvin Klein cashmere tank top, a nice sheer breathable tank. Got this through pre-clothed, one of my favourite um, vintage shops. And then shoes are these leather mules from La Mer, which I haven't actually worn outside yet. It's these that I think I'll probably end up changing when I actually do leave the house because I don't think the back, the open back is practical for the rain if it does rain. So I think I'm going to change these to my patent uh, tabbies, tabby loafers, because I quite like the contrast of the skirt and a sort of like clunky, awkward shoe. But at the moment, just prancing around the house in these, kind of breaking them in a bit because the leather is quite stiff. Um, and then sunglasses, because you just never know whether I could call these sunglasses, I'm sure. I think they're those lenses that get a bit dark when you go outside. I've not tested them out yet. We've not had any sun. Um, but I like the, I like that they're a little bit sheer. You can see my eyes. should probably take that label off. Wearing my hair pulled back a lot at the moment because I'm just hating my hair. Just ha I've had enough of my hair. I'm booked in to get something done to it in a few weeks. What I'm going to get done, I don't know. I just felt like I wanted, I want to change. I'm not ready to chop it off, so I think it's colour. I think we need some sort of like highlights or something in the top here. It's, you know, I've not had anything done to it for years. Um, and it's just, it's just feeling a bit flat, you know? I think it's because there, there's no like variation here. I've got a little bit of, you know warm bits in there but it's it's very kind of blocky and I think it needs breaking up a bit I've still got a bit of blonde through the ends but yeah in a few weeks my hairdresser and I will brainstorm and kind of just zhuzh this up a bit so I don't feel so meh about it <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, oh, break. Yeah, yes. break it for the, for the visuals. Please. Should I? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Someone's got to do it. Yeah. You got to recite. Yeah. Is here fine? Yeah. 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 Ready? Yeah. 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 I'm gutted that it's so gloomy in here today because when it's sunny, the light throughout the whole house is just beautiful. So unfortunately, you will get a bit of a gloomy and grey house tour. So there's no change in the hallway, really. Room on the right here is being used for laundry and general storage. The biggest changes you'll probably notice are the kitchen and the front room on the left here. So this is the kitchen that Dean managed to knock up in three days. Pretty good, um, and it's made it so much better. Like, it just, it functions way better now. We've put in a lot of shelving in an attempt to kind of stop so much clutter on the workspace. However, there is still loads of clutter. Um, so we've got shelves for like appliances when they're not in use and then there's more shelves there and yeah just it's very cluttered and that's just the way it's going to be until we eventually extend out and have our sort of like big kitchen diner but it functions and I think the biggest the thing that's made the biggest difference in here is that these are actually wall units because wall units are typically not as deep as kind of like bottom cupboards so this has instantly made this part feel wider so we can actually both be in this kitchen at the same time, whereas previously these cupboards actually came out way further to the point where you couldn't even open up the door properly. And it felt like you could only really have one person in here at a time. So this feels like a much bigger space now, which is great. Then on the left here, we have a front room and dining space. Um, at the moment, like stuff's just everywhere. This, you know, any surface is just filled with things at the moment until we figure out where we want things. It was a case of just kind of getting things out of boxes and just putting them in places and then figure out later on where we want things. So that is not how I want the window ledge to look. Um, and that's not our final curtain either. Hopefully in the next week or so, we should have curtains arriving, fingers crossed. We've got all the tracks and everything. We're just waiting for the actual curtains themselves, which I think is gonna make a massive difference to all of the spaces because curtains just instantly transform a space and also just make it feel a lot cosier and less echoey. Um, world's most uncomfortable sofa, along with the world's biggest TV, which we measured this and we were pretty, you know, sure that it was going to be a good size and it turns out we've ordered a cinema screen. Um, I personally think it's way too big. Dean likes it, obviously, but I really want to downsize. Um, fireplace, still no progress there. Um, if I come back here and turn around. Bookcase here on the left, the bookcase that caused me no end of stress that still needs quite a lot of work doing to it. There will be cupboard doors all along the bottom there. There will also be, um, I can't think of the word, you know, like a board that will hide the feet. We have our dining table, we have our dining table in, which we just put in this afternoon, along with the Nordic Nuts rug. I'm so... I really wish it was sunnier so you could really kind of see how this room looks in a nice natural daylight but it's just so gloomy and rainy at the moment. Um, got my scarper chairs in, we just put a fresh coat of Osmo on that hence why it looks so shiny. Got the Noguchi in. That light's a bit better actually isn't it, you can really see. And then curtains will also be installed on these windows as well. I think without curtains at the moment, I'm so drawn to like the window ledges and I keep thinking that they need to have stuff on them. Forgetting that actually once we have curtains here, the windows will kind of almost be less of a focus and it will, the curtains will kind of just tie things together a bit more. Um, still need door handles on all of the doors. Right, upstairs. So we have a functioning shower and toilet up here which is great but the room still isn't finished floor's all done haven't painted yet so still no progress with paint still haven't sorted out the storage under here or the shelf or the mirror but we have a shower and a toilet <laughs> should be getting windows this week or next week so that will actually be a proper functioning window along with that one up there will also be function window along with the hallway that will be a new window so then we can actually paint this window ledge and all of the surround we kind of left that because we thought the install of the new window actually might damage all of that so it might need replastering and whatnot um 
And then once we get a window and we can actually get some sort of like blind or like a curtain, because at the moment, just using a picture frame so that no one can see in. Bedroom is not too bad actually. There was, it was more chaotic a few days ago. I still need to sort out a lot of stuff in here. Um, curtains will also be going up here as well. Got Tilco here, Tilco's just a bit of a mess at the moment. Just, you know, there's just stuff in corners, which will eventually go at the moment. It's just chipping away at things job by job. This is our current wardrobe space. This is all Dean stuff, drawers, got some shelves for handbags. This is my side. It looks terrible and there is still stuff to sort through, but the main bulk of my wardrobe is all out and I can see it all and it's in, it's been so much nicer to be able to just see everything and know where everything is. Um, but there is still quite a bit of organising to do and then this room is kind of like overflow. The long term plan is a two storey extension so this room will be made longer that way and will have a return. So it will be like an L shape that goes round the side of the house and this will be like a proper walk in wardrobe. So you walk in, this area will be like you know that like mirror there a whole area where you can just kind of get changed and blah de blah then imagine you can keep going that way and then you can turn left this will be the whole like walk-in wardrobe space it might be better to illustrate it outside the hallway window so this bit here this bit of roof is that downstairs uh, bathroom that will be changed to a flat roof so then we can extend out and this way but we'll own, we won't come we'll only come kind of we won't come right up to the window we're not sure yet we don't have architects plans but you kind of get the gist that it will just follow the this corner and that's it for house i think i think i've kind of gone through all the major bits Today is very much a working from home kind of day. I'm going to be on the sofa doing as much laptop work as possible with the cricket on because the final test of the series starts today. And although England can't win, we can still draw, which would be great because it means Australia don't win and they just retain the Ashes rather than win the Ashes. Um, Dean and I are big test match cricket fans and love the Ashes. It's probably one of the rare circumstances where I actually root for England over Australia. Most other scenarios I'd probably want Australia to win but not with the Ashes always want England to win um but you didn't know I liked cricket that much anyway the clothing that I'll be wearing for today big chunky jumper from the row this is the Ophelia knit I got this about two years ago I think but I'm pretty sure they do like a variation of this knit every season it's very big it's chunky it's quite heavy so it can be a bit difficult to get coats over it but it's extremely cozy um, and great for days like this where it's just a bit grey and rainy and I'm just going to be sat on the sofa. Unfortunately, it does bobble quite a lot, so it requires shaving after a few wears. These are quite old Monica Cordera, 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 never really know how to pronounce that. Uh, linen trousers, back when the brand was called Monica Cordera before they dropped the Monica part really good kind of like sagey greeny browny color and then do you know what has been really great about moving and kind of going through all of my wardrobe it has felt like I've gone on a shopping spree without spending any money because I've rediscovered so many things that have just been kind of like tucked away in boxes or in bags that I've not really had proper access to I, the space where I kept all of my clothes in the old house was just chaos there was no order to it I so much of my wardrobe got neglected because I just couldn't like see it or I didn't have access to it. So now that we've got that room and eventually we'll have like a proper wardrobe space, I just feel like I can see everything so much more easily. And I've rekindled a lot of love for things that I kind of basically, I guess, forgot existed. Um, and my Martiniano glove shoes are one of those. I found them in a, in a bag along with some other great shoes and a black pair of these as well that I've clung on to since I got them about, gosh, seven years ago, I think. I wore these to death uh, when I had when I first got them. Um, they're such a great pair of shoes. Like, they're so comfortable. The leather's so buttery and soft. 
um yeah just a great a great shoe um and i think just a white shoe really like lifts this if i do leave the house it will be the dragon diffusion bag again and not that today requires sunglasses but i just really like how these look with this outfit kaleos uh what are they called the saber yeah in the brown oh yeah i like how they look with this outfit i'll probably just wear them anyway when i go to the supermarket even though there is not an ounce of sun out there check me out and my bookcase how good is this for book chat to actually have the bookcase behind me and i can reach for books um it needs a lot doing to it obviously have not finished with all the staining but was completely i was so close to just having a breakdown with it all and just thought you know what i'm just gonna get all the books on it and i'm gonna tackle the next load of stain and oil in a couple of weeks when i just feel like i i can do it um but it feels nice to kind of just do like a almost like a test run with it and see what everything looks like what things look like on it um i know i'm shooting myself in the foot by doing this and then i have to take them all off and then in a couple of weeks i have to stain them all, all over again but yeah I'm, I'm fine with that that is the decision i've made um so this video kind of just turned into a bit of an outfits video didn't it unintentionally but i think just with kind of like how everything is at the moment and how i'm feeling and everything's very up in the air and i just don't feel quite grounded getting dressed has kind of felt like the one thing i can control and has made me feel like me again so it's actually felt like a really nice ritual to do every morning to kind of go and pick an outfit and really kind of feel like myself again because i've spent quite a few weeks just kind of in dust and paint covered dungarees and just not feeling too great um especially that last week the move i just yeah i it's weird like you get this incredible high from moving but also there's like this incredible low um there's just there's a there's a lot of emotions and then when you're in it's kind of like you just feel so all over the place because just stuff doesn't have a home and yeah it just it's just been a lot for us both so i guess getting dressed has just felt like a bit of a treat in the morning to get me prepped for a day of just then figuring out everything else so if you are not interested in books you can switch off now uh because after book chat i will end the vlog if you are interested in books, I can only apologise for the lack of book chat that's about to start because this year has just not been a good reading year. Last year and the year before, I felt like I read so many great books, but this year, I'd say like 80% of what I've read has fallen quite flat. And I've already spoken about my favourite book so far this year. That was um, Tomorrow, Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Um, aside from that, actually this book, The Anomaly, was quite good. I gave this four stars on Goodreads. This is the story, so basically an event happens with an aeroplane and it's the story of some of the passengers before and after the event or the anomaly as it is called in the book um, regarding the flight. Um, that is literally all I can give away without giving it away. It kind of has a slight, do you remember Lost, that TV show? It kind of has that kind of thing going on, but not quite. So that is all I will say. That I actually did quite enjoy. Um, but I, what have I read this year? I read Sorrow and Bliss. I didn't really enjoy Sorrow and Bliss. I read a book called Red Oblivion, which isn't here actually, I think, because I've not unpacked all of the books just yet. And I was kind of hoping that that would be in a similar vein to like, wild swans or pachinko but unfortunately the pace of it was a little bit too slow steeped in great history and such a, a, an important story but it just it, it felt like oh, it was building up to something and something yeah and it just kind of the pace never really got there um what else i think do you know what i think that is really it to discuss in terms of what I read this year because like last year I read like Christa Dora, I read Wild Swans last year, I read I Am Pilgrim last year, I also read A Fine Balance last year so there was a lot of like strong books read last year and I think the issue with me is I read these great books and then I put them on a pedestal, pedestal for good reason but then I'm always striving for that same reading experience again and I think especially with Pachinko, like, I think I read that two years ago now and it's still one of my favourite books. I think I might just reread it this year because 
I was so enthralled with every character and just the entire story. And I think that's the experience I just want over and over again when I'm reading. I don't want to have to persevere with books. And that's what I've had to do a lot this year. Oh, that reminds me. I read The Trees by Percival Everett. I think I might have already spoken about that book as well. That was great. I don't know if that is here or whether that is still packed away. Yeah, I, I can't see it. Um, so, yeah, I just... I want books that I feel enthralled by and I have not really had that this year. Um, I've spoken to some friends recently to get some recommendations and kind of like refresh my to be read pile. Lots of people recommending Yellow Face, a lot. Um, so potentially going to give that a go. The book I've currently got on the go, which I'm just like, I'm too stubborn to put down, especially when I'm this close to the end, is called The Rook. And this um, is the story of a woman who wakes up in a park in London Surrounded by dead bodies with absolutely no memory of who she is, what she does, or how she got there, or what happened. And she has to piece together who she is using notes that her former self, her, her pre-memory loss self, has left her. Um, this is not a spoiler, by the way. You find this out pretty much, in the, I think, in the first or second chapter. And also, I think it is on the blurb. She basically is a member of this, like, secret society called the Sheke. And it has this real sort of like Harry Potter meets X-Men kind of theme to it. It's quite unusual, like it's not like anything I've ever read. Um, it, the Sheke is like this society of people um, that have, this society has been going on since like the 1800s, like loads and loads of history to it. But these people have powers and it's basically their job to kind of stop people from using their powers for bad. So that's where the X-Men element, element, I feel, comes into it. And there's like a school where young people go to to kind of like nurture their powers, kind of a bit like Professor X had. And so you can see that kind of like Harry Potter X-Men crossover. And actually it sounds like a great story. And there is some really good like dry British humour in there that I quite enjoyed. But there's just something about it that's just not hitting it for me. Um, but I'm going to finish it anyway because I want to find... There's like one thing that hasn't been answered and I'm like, I want to find out the answer. Um, but there's like a lot of terms and there's a lot of people and sometimes it's a little bit hard to follow. Um, so yeah, that's that unfortunately is all I have with books. So apologies to anyone who's been like, can we have a book chat? But I guess this is a great excuse for me to ask you what you've been reading and then people can kind of go through the comments and see um, like note down things yeah what's everyone else been reading what has wowed you recently that you would happily recommend because i am all ears at the moment i want books that really kind of grip me like or you know just really suck me in basically um so that's that gonna call it a day here i hope you enjoyed this week's vlog um the next one's gonna be copenhagen fashion week yes i'm back in copenhagen <laughs> this time in a fashion week capacity um so I'll take you along with me, but until then, I hope you're all doing well, and I shall see you all in the next one.